Very good morning. It's five minutes after eight. Kenya's biggest conversation enters the third hour. Okay, so we are live streaming the show on Spice FM KE, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, we are also on our website www.spicefm.co.ke. We are also are live on KT and Home for the next one hour from now until nine o'clock. In addition to being on Spice FM, so let us begin with the day's proverb, City Muga. One should punish a child the first time they come home with a stolen egg. Otherwise, the day he returns home with an ox, it will be too late. One should punish a child the first time they come home with a stolen egg. Yes, otherwise. Otherwise. On the day they return home with a stolen ox, <laughs> it will be too late. <laughs> Where is this proverb from, City? The lovely continent. So those people from Africa. Mm -hmm. Africans with their long stories called Proverbs. Yes. You know, this is uh, an African way of explaining how it is. You teach a child in the way that they should grow. And when they're older, they will not depart from it. Mm. If you teach it responsibility, when they're adult and grown up, they'll still be responsible. In fact, they'll now be genuinely irresponsible. If you teach them to be responsible, on the other hand, mm. when they grow up, they will be Responsible. responsible as they yes. grow up. Okay. So let's have the conversation on Siokima, what's, what's been happening. We have for a number of uh, days talked about this. The Nairobi Expressway project, which begins in Siokima, right there at uh, after Mlolongo, goes all the way to ABC Place. How many kilometers again? 21, 27? 7. 27, 27 kilometers. <coughs> okay. Uh, this project was discussed and then it was launched by the president and the people who are overall in charge of it are the kenya national highways authority and then there's a contractor on site who's going to run this thing on a ppp for a number of years there are very many other people who are involved in the project and these are the people who for example kenya power who needed to move the lines Nairobi water and sewerage company who needed to move the pipes other people who provide internet services and they are private companies and they needed to also come and move there their 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 lines and then the the critical stakeholders the road users motorists pedestrians and everybody else including boda boda people including mkokoteni people all those people and we have to factor in that mlolongo has a way bridge mm. and there are heavy commercial vehicles that ply between mlolongo going towards the western part of the country and they will get to the area near Ole Sereni Hotel and join the Southern Bypass, but between Mlolongo and Ole Sereni Hotel, it's part of the construction part. Okay? Now, the chaos that has befallen the people who are using this road from all sides has been madness. But especially those who ply Mombasa Road, anywhere from city cabanas going down. It's chaos. And then there's a the residence of Siokimau who <laughs> have suffered. The leadership of the residents of Siokimau is with the, in the studio with us today. The chairman of the Siokimau Residents Association, John Mutinda, joins us. Good morning, John. Good morning to you. Thank you. Karibu sana. And also his predecessor, Mohamed Ismail, who was a former chairman of the Siokimau Residents Association, is in the studio. Mohamed Karibu. Thank you so much. It's good to have you on the show. And we appreciate that you've come and joined us. We call this the hot seat, but because you people are already facing the heat from out there, we are going to call this the neutral black seat. Mm -hmm. True. Okay. And you're going just to talk about the pain of what is going on. Before the top of the hour, we had two callers from Siokima who just called randomly and were like, we have suffered here for so long. There's dust, there's traffic jam, and there's very many things. John, this issue of dust, explain to us what's happening. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, to start with the uh, Siokimau Residents Association was part and parcel of this project from inception. Mm. Uh, we were privileged to be the part and parcel of the EAI, the impact assessment of that project. Uh, the fortunate thing at that time is that Kenna, being the proponent of this project, were the people looking for us to sign that document. Mm -hmm you realize that uh, for every project you do, there are those very big positive impacts, mm. which we are all over and seen all over the region. There is no question about the, the positive impacts. 
But we also address the, uh, the negative impacts at the time of our EIA public participation. And at that period, we could single out the negative impacts, which needed mitigation measures before the project took place. Uh, unfortunately, um, the proponent being Kenya has slept on the job. And I think it's very important that uh, uh, NEMA being the license, uh, the licensee of this project should look into the uh, restoration orders and some uh, things of how we can go about rectifying the situation. Mm. If you look at this project, it's not about, it's not a Kenyan project because it's being done on a northern corridor stretch. Mm. The road we are talking about is not a Kenyan road, it's a regional road which is controlled by the East African nations and to some extent, being the northern corridor, we have lost close to 60% to the central corridor. Our central corridor is Dar es Salaam, Mwanza into Tanzania. And it's quite often, for the people who are in the logistics, they will agree, uh, we've lost close to 50, uh, 60% of that traffic because people have gone to the central region. Uh, again, now we're looking at the impact on this is also costing a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. So, in, in a nutshell, uh, we're looking at the proponent having slept on the job. Mm. One, we had issues like uh, the turnoffs. Those are the things which are supposed to have been addressed from the word go. And if you go to that project report, mm. they are clearly marked. Look at the dust which is emanating from there. It's, it's an health hazard because it relies on our air pollution mm. <clears throat> when it comes to NEMA. As I'm talking now, people from Siokimau cannot access the main road into their workplaces because the service lanes have already been closed. There have not been uh, issues coming up and how do, do we mitigate against uh, those impacts? Uh, when we made noises on Friday, I think you could hear the multi-agency team visited the area. Mm. And one thing we were promised is that they're going to close all those, uh, uh, they are going to work on the working space vis-a-vis -vis the, 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 the road. That has not been uh, done. Mm. If you remember very well, the South Bay stretch to Westlands, there were those Mabatis putting across to control the, uh, the flow of traffic. That has been promised and it has not happened in Siokimau as we are talking. That is f three days after that assurance. Uh, the, the splitting of the water, the splashing of the water on the dust has not been done. And other issues like the diversions have also not been uh, contained. So we still have an issue and this has to be addressed very, very urgently. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, I mean, we're looking at quite a number of issues here. Um, the, the traffic uh, situation is not good. We saw consecutive days where people were in traffic for a very long period sleeping of time, on sleeping on the road, getting home at 3 a.m. and turning around, basically, and going back to work. Now, beyond it being a traffic situation, from what we are hearing now, a health hazard also has come into play. So there's dust that's up in the air. I mean, we're seeing white skies in the middle of the night and early in the morning and then through the day. And then this now has an effect on health. Moha, what exactly is happening in that? And where, in terms of the water splashing, we did hear that that was going to happen. Three days later, it has not. But what are some of the issues that we're hearing now coming out from residents um, in terms of their health? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> I think you just need to be at the flyover before JKIA to see how what happens up over there. You know, it's quite dusty, thick clouds of dust all over the place. And, uh, you know, the other day when uh, people slept over, uh, you know, on the roads, unable to get back to their homes, we, we, we made noise. I mean, we went to Twitter and tried to really wake up some people. Uh, like my senior here said, uh, they were down there talking about how they're going to suppress those dust. Uh, made promises, in fact, uh, and because we've made noise, I think that's a reactionary way of doing things by the government people. So... Uh, by nature, I think it's very important to really highlight, like my brother here said, that Suikimau, uh, or Mombasa Road rather, it's a bottleneck. Mm. You know, we, we have a situation where Jomaknyata is a sparse, you know, land where it, it becomes a bottleneck from the Jomaknyata junction up to uh, the river. 
you, you can imagine the number of trucks and vehicles passing through this road on, on two ways. Mm -hmm. uh, as we speak, it has been narrowed to the outbound uh, road to, on that road is, is one, one line. Yes. Imagining how Kenyans usually have the bad manners of overlapping or uh, even a car stalling on the middle of the road, it, it really clogs and really gets so bad. Uh, what these people really didn't do is two things quite very important to, 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 to highlight. One, we have a government people who usually don't listen to each other. I mean, <coughs> look, I give you a quite very uh, practical example of Kenya Railways uh, is a ministry of roads or whatever it is they're usually Transport. called, transporteers, mm -hmm. uh, coming under the same uh, ministry and seers. Uh, we have a railway station in Suikimau. If mitigation measures will have been made to mitigate the troubles we are really going through, Kenya Railways will have taken advantage over the presence of commuter railway mm -hmm. by increasing the number of you know, the trips that they make to town, mm. they are asleep. They don't even do the normal trips that they are supposed to do. And, and here we are really having a situation <coughs> where uh, governments had planned all these kind of things. Uh, if you look at it, we gave up, uh, we, we, as a, an association, we gave uh, our feedback. And uh, in terms of, uh, we, we gave them a list of things that they're supposed to do before they started the project. And part okay. of the things we told them is, you, for us to be able to be sure that we, we succeed in this project, let's have mitigation measures, let's have more trips on the train. Let's so this was, this was absolutely, talked about absolutely, before absolutely. construction began and before it was commissioned. Uh, These conversations took place? Absolutely, yes. We had a discussion on this. Mm. We, I mean, having been there, we know where the shoe <coughs> usually pinches and we really knew that there are no diversions. And we even gave them, uh, you know, you tell them, you, you can grade some of the Suikimau roads and so that. Like mm -hmm. the airport road that comes just before JKIA mm -hmm. is a good road that can be able to link Katani Road and Mulolongo and even pass there to the uh, river mm -hmm. if they had uh, taken. It's a three, four, five kilometers road that if they graded it well mm -hmm. or even did it as part of their project, so should have completely <gasps> opened the place. They are not using those roads which are available. Now, because the road is blocked, uh, everyone is finding a way through so you, came out, you can imagine the kind of dust which is there. Mm. Secondly, we have school going children. Nobody has thought about the schools are open and right now kids are really brought out and most kids usually either come to school <coughs> so came out or get to go to schools outside so you, came out. Mm. you can imagine having children in buses, in school buses sleeping in the buses on the roads uh, until midnight and they are fathers and mothers uh, going to pick them with border borders uh, just get them home and then just prepare them to go back to school the other night we had a discussion in our forums mm. and this is quite very important mm. there is a there was an emergency medical emergency there are no public hospitals in suikimau mm. you can imagine now with that kind of clogging uh, a lady was on, on, on in labor no no hospital. public hospital no public in hospital suikimau. in the whole suikimau and that's another, Maybe that's another a discussion point that needs to no, be absolutely no, no. Uh, nothing <laughs> Uh, and you can uh, imagine how many private hospitals are there? Uh, we have, I think, one. Uh, it's called Sekimau uh, Health, Health Center, which usually closes one. by 8 o'clock. Now, we've got about four or five small hmm. ones. We've got uh, do, fountain of... Do, do, do you know what their, their capacity is? The reason why I'm asking is, you preface this discussion by telling us off-air that just the number of people who... The homestead, 25,000 yes. homesteads. And growing about sixty percent. Absolutely correct. So now you're saying that these homesteads are serviced by four medical facilities. No, let's call them. Those sound like clinics to me. Yeah. Yeah. Clinics, yeah, or they are clinics actually. Mm. Yes, so, clinics. Okay, and then you get to them all. By the way, they're not even inside, so you came out. Please continue. I just want to get that right in my head. Yes, go on. So we, we, with that, there was an emergency. A lady who was in labor, and the way we usually have a very so, vibrant social media, we, we live like a community. Everybody gets to know what everyone does, uh, and uh, the family were really trying to wonder how can we get out this lady to hospital. Mm. The closest you can come to a hospital providing the facility for maternity services is either to South C, South B, or go down to the river Shalom Hospital. Shalom. So th this family, we, we really had to mobilize medical personnel within Soikimau to get that lady out of the trouble she was in. When we talk about the issues in Soikimau, it's that bad. As we speak right now, I mean, I've, I've uh, been told uh, how people are still stuck on the service lane and able to get into the into the main line getting out of so came out so it's not it's not something that we can just easily uh, you know over overlook it's mm. really very bad mm. for you to get here this morning because we had requested you to come here in good time so that we can start the conversation at eight you got here at seven thirty. 
I got to leave my car at a, get to a mall and come with a border border. I was telling my sister here that it's really good. So there was already traffic. You it left, was already get, traffic. Get and, to a mall. Yes. And what time did, had you left your home? She sent me a text around 5.30. Mm. I dressed up in 20, 30 minutes. I was on the road by quarter to six. And when I saw that I cannot be able to make, I left my car. My car get so quarter to six out of home. And this, we're talking about what? How many kilometers are we talking about? Three, 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 three kilometers. Three kilometers. Three kilometers. Three kilometers. Yeah. <laughs> and you had to leave your, your vehicle and take a border border. border, border, border so you can be here by 7.30 for there you this go. conversation. There you go. When you're having this uh, environmental impact assessment conversations with NEMA and the other agencies, what are the main areas of concern that you raised as an association? And what mitigation measures have you proposed? Um, one, we had proposed uh, three inter intersections into Mombasa Road. Uh, one near the Waybridge, another one near ne the Nation Printing, and probably the third one near the Gateway Mall. Mm. Um, we did not pull that together and uh, Kenna gave us two, which was is, it was more than 50% mm. and we never complained. Uh, we also proposed to another three, um, uh, three foot bridges mm -hmm. because you'll be realizing that from Siokimao, our, our, our residents will, uh, will need to access the, the railway station and services on the other side. Yep. So we propose that. And as, as far as I'm concerned, we've not seen any of those uh, issues taking place. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine after the service, uh, after the express so takes off, there will be nobody crossing the road. So this is something else we are waiting to come back here and discuss because it's 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 not natural for people to to be told to go to the railway station and they are not given um the facilities yeah, especially pedestrians that the, the pedestrians mm. so those are the the the, the, the issues we are looking at but the mitigation measures have not taken place because we've not seen it mm. okay one thing bothers me as i'm looking at it right now is that if we can talk about the traffic which is it's 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 not a joke and we can the assumption is that you know it's just those who reside in siokimau that are suffering this but it is not Beyond. we're looking at people who are coming into the city we're looking at people who are leaving the city we're looking at traffic that's coming from kitengela athi river machakos mombasa Dar es Salaam, I mean, sorry, uh, Tanzania, coming even further, Isinia, down the road. Everybody comes and gets stuck here for hours. So we're looking at all of that. But the health issues are one that we cannot take for granted either, right? So we're looking at respiratory issues that people have been talking about. People have been complaining in the last few days about nosebleeds in children and even adults. The air is extremely dry and then adding the dust to this. So, And then we're also hearing the noise pollution that takes place because what may be unbeknownst to people is that in the airport land, there is sand harvesting that is going on for the construction. So the trucks are moving in all night harvesting this sand. And again, the dust is, 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 um, is adding to all of this. So there are a number of other agencies that come into play here. NEMA comes into play. The county government of Machakos comes into play. And my question is, have they been approached beyond saying, what can we see that, can actually, that has actually been, been done or some attention given? Look, we, we, we constantly engage the government agencies. And uh, I must tell you this, we have uh, not only the Kimaru Student Association, in Mavoko, we have a consortium of uh, associations. All the associations in, in Adi River is usually brought in together. We call it MARA. We have a very strong and vibrant uh, forum uh, to discuss issues and try to really share notes. And, and in fact, today, uh, one of them was supposed to have come here. He, he is stuck in traffic to really join us. <laughs> uh, so uh, basically, uh, Bavoko is another story for, for, for that matter, because uh, again, you know, when you elect people and they're really not available <coughs> to be able to really listen to you. Uh, one thing we've done on us as an association, uh, the multi-agency association that we have in Mavoko, is we have... Uh, we have done letters communicated to people, all agencies, whether it's NEMA, whether it is uh, Kenha, whether it is, uh, you know, the, the Ministry of Sec uh, Internal Security for that matter, because again, some issues which we really face in Suikimao and beyond is, is about security again mm -hmm. sometimes, because even our airport, I mean, uh, you, you can have that of kind of a clog and, uh, and nobody's able to really uh, do anything in case something happens at, at the far end of the airport, you can't even rescue people. 
So basically, and, and allow me to repeat this, the, the other day we reached out to Kenya Rail Railways, and, and this is quite very important. You know, when you have government agencies who don't sit down and try to plan, this is what usually happens. What does the Kenya Railway uh, commuter train that is in Soikimao doing? When we had meetings three years, four years ago, they were really complaining that people are not using the trains because they are not aware about what is happening. There's an opportunity to let people learn this train. Mm. In this country, we've always been talking about how traffic is bad, how to mitigate, how people are not using the bulk uh, transport system that is available. Why don't the government just sit down and say, let's make use of this train, mm. which is just there. Increase the number of fleets. Mm. We will not be having these problems. People in Suikuma will probably just have walked. We will not even be having a, talking about transport and, and, and people leaving their cars on the, on the streets. School children will have been planned in such a way that they are really picked and dropped by, by the train. So basically, what we are looking at as a, as, as a society is government who doesn't, or government people, and I always tell this to our community, I don't know what happens to people when they join government. Mm. Mm. I mean, people lose themselves when they go to government. And I think <laughs> it's unfortunate. I'm, I'm sorry to say that. Uh, I, I totally don't understand <laughs> why someone, I mean, Kenyans, we are usually seen to be one of the brightest people. You mm. get out of this country and go somewhere else. Uh, we are the most sought human resource. Yeah. But when we come back and work, look at how our private sector is thriving. Safaricom is thriving, making a lot of profits. Why can't we make profits in the government agencies? Mm. Because we lose ourselves when we get to those offices. It's quite sad. Um, well, maybe to add what he's talking about, I think uh, uh, this project seems to have been my baby when it came up because it was a very good project mm. with so many good goodies on it. I participated in organizing for the public participation. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was not missing two, three calls a day from Kenya because they wanted me. Mm -hmm. I'm an, an environmentalist, by, uh, environmentalist by, by profession, by volunteering, and I was being reached by every environmentalist who had an interest on this project. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll be very sincere to tell you, during the public participation, we could eat what we wanted. Uh -huh. And yeah. these people were just calling, calling and telling us how the project All the gone. sweeteners were. All the sweeteners <laughs> were there. All the positive <laughs> impacts were there. All the negative uh, impacts were there. And the rider was, mm. there were very, very good mitigation measures. Right. We approved the project. Never issue the license. It is stopped from there. How many what calls do you know? I have now, only Friday, I managed, we manage as an association because uh, apparently where I'm sitting today, I'm elevated to the chair of Mavoko Alliance of Residents Association, wow. MARA. I'm not talking on Siokimau Residents Association now. Mm. Is when we wrote on Thursday, to the DG Nema and the DG Kenna to tell them, look, can you go back to your license and look at what we agreed? Mm. Uh, we are still insisting if all does not go well, uh, we need to move very fast and tell Nema, look, this is not what we agreed. Mm. And for your information, as my colleague has said, it's so unfortunate that when you leave private uh, sector in this country and you go to public sector, things change overnight. I don't know what happens there because you don't see what happens. I, I'm sure if I was to make, uh, to make names in, the, in this studio, uh, well, I may not even leave the, uh, the studio, but <laughs> it is a real, real situation. What we're looking at is an association, the mm. Mavoko Alliance of Residents Association is, it is our right. The Constitution is very clear. Article 42 of this Constitution guarantees us the right to clean and healthy environment. And there is no question about it. Regardless mm. of what's happening. Regardless of what we're doing, regardless of who is doing it, even if we, the five of us, mm. close this studio, walk, walk to Nema, bang the table, we still have the right as citizens of this country. Yeah. So as we are looking at it, Nema is aware that the, 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 uh, the principles of the license are not are there too. And they are very, very well about it. Uh, we've sent this one to the director of uh, Nema, and we are waiting to say, from here we're going to monitor the situation. 
and probably and the response you get from this. and the response we're going to get will still come back to tell you we're going to court we're mm. going to the tribunal we are banging the, uh, the tables we are going on the streets because we are kenyans we understand all the languages and drain the swamp actually, John. Drain it's the very very <laughs> We're live on Spice FM online and on KTN Home, having a conversation with the chairperson of the Siokimau Residents Association, who also is the chairperson of the Mavoko Alliance of Residents Associations, and his predecessor at uh, Siokimau Residents Association, Mohamed Ismail. What's happening with the construction of the Nairobi Expressway? How are the residents of Siokimau suffering alongside the residents of everywhere other parts down the road? Kenya's biggest conversation, it continues in the Situation Room this hour, is Eric Latif, Nduoko, C.T. Muga, and John Mutinda, who's the chair of the Siokimau Residents Association and the Mavoko Alliance of Residents Associations, and Mohamed Ismail, who is a resident of Siokimau and a former chairman of the Siokimau Residents Association. The issue here is the construction of the expressway, and what is happening, especially on the road and the residents of Siokimau. Washida says it's as if Kenha has no authority over the contractor. The contractor is more powerful than Kenha. <laughs> as we're going to the break, we're talking about what uh, happened is, and, and, and the engineers of Kenha were here last week. The chairman of uh, Kenha was here and the engineer in charge of the expressway project was also in the studio and they said before the project started they had the of course the environmental and social impact assessment meetings with all the stakeholders including where you were, they were calling you in Siokimau and talking to all other stakeholders and they factored in everybody they factored in the pedestrians they factored in you know uh, border border users they factored in kokoteni people they factored in small vehicles and large vehicles as we speak today, like you've said, we already have a problem, not just with the motorists, but pedestrians also don't even know how to use this particular road. Where are pedestrians walking? How are they crossing the road as the construction is going on? Has that been factored in? We don't see it happening. Now, John, you were saying that before the, as, as we were calling for these meetings earlier, they'd constantly call you and say, you know, organize your people. We want to come and have a meeting with them. We want to talk to them. We want to sensitize them on this project. After that, how many times have they called you? Um, I'll be very, very sincere to tell you none. Mm. We've never received any call from Kenna, who is the proponent of this project. Uh, we've not even had anything like the CSR because as a community with such a, pro uh, a project, We'll ask for some uh, CSR to be taken care of. Maybe the tarmacking of one kilometer road into Siokimau, mm. maybe putting up a, a, an hospital in Siokimau, maybe putting up a nursery school in Siokimau. But you remember the other week, instead of thinking all that, a nursery school was closed just because they went into, the, uh, into their sewer system and broke it. You can say the damages the project is bringing vis-a-vis -vis the, the benefits. So, in fact, as we are talking now, um, the project is doing more harm than what it, is, it should have uh, brought to the residents mm. of Mavoko. I'm not talking of Siokimau because it's crossed all over. The, and everybody in Mavoko is affected. And as we, we as the Association of Mavoko Alliance of Residents Association, we are equally, uh, um, we are equally uh, involved mm. in, in this project. You know, last week they had a meeting. Um, these are the, the leadership of Kenha plus the engineers in charge. And it was about this particular project. And they met at Mlolongo, right, on Friday. Mm. And after which they released a statement and said what the work that they are going to do. So they met there. They met the leadership of Machakos County, the the, the CEC in charge of roads and, and transport and infrastructure. They also now brought in the engineers <coughs> in charge and the project uh, contractors as well. Were the residents alerted of this meeting? Um, immediately after we wrote to the DG Kenna, mm -hmm. copy to DG Nema. Uh, we were told that a meeting was to take place, but we were not involved. In fact, we were surprised to see a multi-agency team visiting 
the area without the residents. So you can imagine, mm. these people are told there is a problem. Instead of contacting the residents to know where the problem is, they just come, walk, make decisions, and go out. Now, out of that meeting, uh, we may need to get the resolutions from a different angle, which was semi-official. But again, we were told, look, all the roads are going to be marked. All the traffic flow will be directed. All the working areas will be secured with the Mabatis, like we have the in South B and the this rest. Is yeah. mm. uh, it wasn't because we were not even invited, but well, we got it from the reliable sources and the multi agencies. Yeah. So we were told that was likely to be done over the weekend. Okay. For us, we this, this weekend that has now ended. Yes, the mm. weekend which has entered because they claimed. On a Friday, it was not really practical to work on heavy machineries and all that. Yeah. So we waited for Saturday. Nothing happened. We waited on uh, uh, Sunday, which was until last night. Nothing happened. We are waking up early in the morning to find nothing is moving in. In fact, coming here, I left the house at 5.30. John, no, 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 you can't really say nothing has happened. Yesterday, they tweeted, can have. The construction site along Siokimau area is being hoarded for traffic regulation that is putting the Mabatis along Mombasa Road. The work area is also being watered on an hourly basis to reduce the dust in the area. I, I am... Uh, what, what, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. Not, not true? No, no, no. Can you just excuse me as their chairman? Uh -huh. Absolutely nothing. And I want to change the nothing to capital N O T H. I N G and underline in red and underline. No, no, the, the, um, do, 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 do. If I do it in red, I'm not going to be very fair to the government. I'll just highlight it in green. <laughs> <laughs> they even put a photo here on the Twitter. Okay, as they say on the 28th of August, they're showing the work going on, and then on the yesterday again, Nairobi Expressway JKIM no longer 28th August 2021, holding for traffic regulation in progress. They were putting in the Mabati. The second Where? tweet. Can, can I say uh, um, the second tweet. Oh, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm just a messenger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the second tweet here is showing a truck. And there's somebody, the truck is basically pouring some water on a very dusty section of the road. And they're saying they're doing this on an hourly basis. Absolutely no. Uh, can I tell you something? Mohan. Yes, Mohan. You know, holding with Mabati is, is secondary to what we really need. Mm. As we speak right now, there are those boulders that are usually put. Yeah. The, the excavation areas are quite deep that any driver who is not very careful can just drop in there. Mm. The other day when we slept in, in, in traffic, mm. uh, the next morning they tweeted and said uh, that the traffic was caused by a truck which has stalled somewhere. Mm. I mean, that was a lie. Mm. We were informed of the same. Yes. And look, look, in such a project, the best that someone would have done, you know, is to make sure that we have emergency vehicles can be able to tow vehicles which stall on the road so that when you create one lane, for the kind of road Mombasa Road is, the expectation is anything can happen on that road. What mitigation measures do you have? Uh, allow me to talk about something else. Yeah. Beyond Suikimao, there is Mlolongo. Mm -hmm. At Mlolongo, we have the only primary public school there. It has over 2,000 students in that school. Mm. If you have seen, there is a footbridge which you shall just immediately after Mlolongo. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, th that place has been ducked out without caring how the kids are going to get to school or out. And you know what? While the school is on the other side, the children who are going to this school are all coming from this side. Yep. Nobody cares how these kids cross to that other side. There are no even traffic marshals to direct or try to really think about how these kids usually cross. Mm. Look, you know, when, 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 we, when we talk about these things, I mean, we really need to fix this country. Because what we have, and I'm sorry to be repeating this every other time, mm. is... People in government who lose themselves, you know, some things my five-year-old will, will sometimes question me, Daddy, why don't you do this? And you wonder, the person who probably has been trained professionally to be doing these things should have probably overseen and seen that before the project starts. And, uh, and, and, and yeah, and, and talking about the airport road, uh -huh. it's good to highlight this, that usually they have a, a station where the whole of the project is usually done from is Suikimau, just behind in the fence of the airport. Mm -hmm. They have a very big site house, site place, where they usually bring in material and try to really change it into whatever, the dust or whatever it is, and then carry on to the road. You know the amount of road, the amount of dust that usually those trucks create on that road is unimaginable. 
while they have just marmed the inside road in the airport, they should have probably thought about how can we be able to give back to this community we are really having this problem mm. with. This month when kids went back to school, if you ask any, and by the way, I wish you had, someone had gone to talk to these schools. The, 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 the infections and the, the dust has really caused to kids is very unimaginable. My two young kids who have joined nursery uh, this time have not gone to school half of the time. Well, I can give you some of those statistics. I'll and it's interesting you. because now the Children's Hospital that is resident in Siokima gave us some statistics. And they're talking about for every 15 children that have, that have come in the last four weeks, 11 of them have come with respiratory illness Correct. okay Correct. and these are not the uh, chronic issues that they've had and just giving us that information on you know anonymity but these are not chronic issues that they have but they're allergy environmental issues 11 out of 15, 11 out of every 15 children that have presented in this children's hospital in the last four weeks have come because, because of this, of this. And allow me to highlight this F for the, for purpose of record the project is going to really open up that part of the country sure. and we really definitely like it. But again, uh, we were thinking suffering for a better tomorrow. At what cost? Yes, and that's what I'm coming to. Mm. Suffering for a better tomorrow was worth it. But again, sometimes by the time you get to that better tomorrow, how many of us will cross to that tomorrow? I mean, how, how, how bad are we before we cross over to that better tomorrow? Yeah. Mm. We, we need to deal with it today. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. There's a pertinent issue here regarding the standards that are used when building such roads. We did pose this question. One of the things we were told was they have been fast forwarding the time of completion, meaning it was set to be completed at a certain time. Then they pushed the time forward. Mm. So it's like my words here, dealing with an emergency. Yeah. So everything that you ought to have done with a certain degree of leisure cannot be done. What I still don't understand is... Um, we are not inventing anything new in building this road. It's the first time we're seeing such a thing in Kenya, but the contractor has done this before. Yes, in a way, in a way else. Well. Yes. <coughs> and there are standards by which, wherever they come from, they ensure that the building, because if you're building it, you know what you're going to encounter. Exactly. Okay? It's part of the planning. Yeah. My question is, as residents of Siokimau, have you sat and considered what it is you need to do not to alert the government and talk to them from time to time but to bring them to the point where they actually do something they're sitting up as we say ginger up listening there listen mm -hmm. even i'm sure they listen to this yes. what we're saying here yes. have you considered doing something that will actually make them all these promises good and well do something so that everything that needs to take place when such a road is being built is actually done um, maybe I'll come in very quickly and uh, the issue of uh, pushing these projects uh, uh, forward, e forward uh, to me is nothing because it's just like this is a professional who has to change things. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll equate this one with a car which puts in uh, three passengers behind. If you put one to make four, does it make, really change anything? There's very little to change on that car because the, the springs are there, it's able to get it. But basically what we're trying to say is, we as the residents, we are res uh, responsible citizens of this country. Mm. We did not probably wish to start with the, with the street. Uh, but again, when we are forced to go to the streets, we'll be forced to do it. Mm. Because one is that we have alerted NEMA that the license they issued has, be, has got some pitfalls and has been floated. Right. That is, on Friday, no, on Thursday morning, that letter uh, was placed with DG Nema. We gave him an opportunity to look at it on Friday, which I think they did. Here we are with you today. We're going to, see, uh, to look at the situation back after this. And the next thing we should be looking at is, is to make sure that our rise to health and clean environment as contained in Article 42 of our Constitution is followed. Mm. So it will not be very hard for our residents to walk up and go to the tribunal and say, can we have this project stopped? Mm. We are not limited to that because it's 
really our right. Mm. But again, we want to give everybody an opportunity. If somebody does not appreciate what we are uh, going How through. How long have you been having these discussions with Kenya? Well, first. <coughs> and Nema. Um, uh, months. How long? We've been complaining unofficially. Uh, officially, we went to them on Thursday last week. So this is the first time that you wrote to them now? Officially. Yes. Okay. After this is now going out of proportion. Okay. okay. Uh, we are studying it within the course of the week. If things don't change, we'll have to change the tact. Didn't you what does the tribunal say? Sorry, Siji. What, Sorry, what does the tribunal say? If you are taking a case to them, uh, what should you have done before, prior to coming before this tribunal? I mean, you'll need to, to demonstrate that you've actually reached out to the to the officers, you've alerted them of what's happening. What's the threshold? How many times? What's the threshold? How many times should you write to NEMA before you go to the tribunal? We, we are supposed to give them two notices. And the third one, we should invoke the, 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 the regulation articles okay. and move to a tribunal and tell them, look, this is not happening. It has to happen. And with the tribunal, uh, I'll assure you uh, where I'm sitting in, uh, I think we've got the, one of the best tribunals in the, in the Republic when it comes to the environmental uh, tribunal in this country. Mm -hmm. yeah. We do, but there's a reason why I'm asking you this question, because every time you have this discussion, if there was anything adverse happening, it doesn't stop. It continues, and I get the impression it even escalates. If there was dust, it's not getting less. Mm. If it was children's lives being endangered because certain conditions and precautions that which should have been taken or not taken, it's not getting better. So if things don't change, then the very disasters that we say ought to be averted by these steps will actually occur. And well, then what will you say then? When we, when we are following technicalities, yes. oh, we are supposed to write the first time and then wait X number of days. As you're waiting X number of days, there's sewer flowing into the school. There is dust flowing into people's homes. All these things are happening. There are people who are uh, getting prone to accidents. Is there no leeway, even with the tribunal, for this is a case that has now reached, escalated to a certain point where you can fast track this? Look, what we did, Adua, we, we, we are people who are civilized. Mm. And uh, in, in a civilized society, mm. you try to do things in a very civilized way. One thing is the, the crisis we are in right now has started the last one week. Because, you know, the project has now moved to that bottleneck part of the Mombasa Road, yep. you know, from uh, Airport Road towards Mnolongo Road. Mm. And here is where we've really then been engaging the last 10 days, in fact, more than two weeks now. Uh, and yes, on Friday when they came and came to the ground to give us uh, assurance, even though they did not call us, was they said, we will be done with the issues on this stretch in two weeks. But even before that two weeks, what we said, uh, together with Mara and ourselves and uh, the community around there, is we have given them until the weekend that they will have promised that you've been reading. Mm. They are doing the boulders and whatever it is that they haven't done. Uh, we know what Kenyan uh, government and the people in offices will usually listen to. We, if, if it gets to that point, then we will probably then call out our people because the road is already closed. Mm. We'll probably make it hard by closing it completely so that people come there and try to become a bit more responsible. I mean, we can't even stop them anyway because mm. that's what people are asking for. So it's been us telling them, look, guys, let's try to really uh, do what you're the ones who've been re reasonable. That's the yeah. language, from what you're saying, that's the language that will be listened to. Because, look, we, if we said that, for example, basic, I mean, and, and I think when, when, when they were here in the studio, Ken had told us, you know, it's possible. And I believe it was Eric who asked that question. And he said, look, it's possible that we can put water there. We can put water because we cannot, build, we cannot put tarmac now. It's too early in the in the construction to put tarmac there. So the next possible option is for us to water it and then, you know, bring down the levels of dust that we see, whether it's on the main highway or it's in this semi-quarry that's going on inside the airport land, right? Yeah. That has not been done, as simple as it's that. So also. in your opinion, is that the language then that they would hear when we say, all right, well, since this is not being done, we're not going anywhere anyway. We're stuck on this road for eight hours. Yes. <laughs> we might as well sit here and not let anything go on. That is exactly what the... The, 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 the residents and, uh, and everyone around there has been asking for. It's in fact Chair who has been telling them, I'm engaging constantly and, uh, Kenha and Nema to really be able to really get these things done. Mm. We all know how much this road is costing us. You know, it's you know, exaggerated in terms of pricing mm. because of the fact that it's on an urban setup and those kind of things, which we've really said as Kenyans, let's carry the burden. Uh -huh. we carry, we're going to carry the burden. Mm. Those 
burdens included that they should be able to mitigate <coughs> the problems they are really, like my brother here said. <coughs> Those things have been factored. The contractor knows and has probably worked in other countries where things really work better, and he knows that these are the things he's supposed to do. We are not asking for something that is not out of, you know, ordinary. We are asking for something which is quite ordinary. Mm. Let them water the place, open the, the roads, try to have more traffic officers on the road mm. so that people don't get stuck, and uh, have emergency vehicles uh, to be able to take care of the things which come up over with the projects. Let's Just to add on, yes. uh, I, I wish to probably look at it this way. With the affected residents, we are so fair to this project, so fair to an extent that we are giving time, uh, we're giving them time to adjust their, uh, their issues. As we are sitting here, we are under pressure from the residents and we are only telling them, look, please give us a chance because Kenyans are Kenyans, they would wish to do their own things their own way. Mm. But as we are sitting here, we are trying to plead with the government. We are promised, you are promised issues which are not coming up mm. and we are telling them, we are waiting, we are waiting. Let me tell you one thing, if you order spring for so long, it will blow. Yep. And this is now a time bomb. We are trying to tell the government, look, it is possible to splash water on these roads, which does not need any miracle. It, <laughs> it is possible because you told us on Saturday, you're going to put on the holdings, mm. on the roads, it has not been done. Yep. These are the things. In fact, on Saturday, I, I came up a very uh, interesting scenario whereby a lady was driving a, a Toyota Viz underneath a working excavator. You can imagine this. Uh. We're looking at Nairobi being one of the best cities in, the, uh, in Africa. And then we are saying a lady is driving beneath a working excavator. It's, it's not known. So basically what he's saying is we have been so lenient to this project mm. and we think our patience is running yes. out mm. let it run out because we are kenyans but before it runs out let us tell the government that you have been sleeping on it because you've not been able to do it look at the expense of putting up um, a, a multi uh, multi-sectoral team on a friday we are talking on a monday whereby nothing, nothing has already taken place. So many hours later. In fact, um, Joan Shiro says this is the current situation between Gateway and Siokimau to Mlolongo, the dust, the traffic. And she's even recorded a video which you can clearly see there is total chaos and pandemonium. I don't even know where, where, where are you heading to Joan in this case. It's just chaotic. And she says, do you really think that you have done anything here? Nothing has changed. You need to do something. This is just one of the comments that we're seeing here. The current situation uh, in uh, Shokimao. Johnny Walker is asking, is there no way that this project can be halted until such a time that the rules are adhered to? Very good questions coming. Talk about the overflowing sewer stretching all the way from Nation to Weybridge. It's been like this for years. When will this be fixed? All these things happening on this particular road as the project is going on. And this is what we are discussing this morning. So in the next hour, we want to open up the phone lines so that the residents, not just of Siokimau, but everywhere, the residents of the Republic of Kenya can call in, speak to the leadership of Siokimau Resident Association and Mavoko Resident Associations and tell them, okay, so what do you need to do? What do they need to do so that we can see this project being done the right way? This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.